I'm Anne Marie Slaughter, uh, and I'm the CEO of New America. And welcome to the New Balancing Act. Uh, and it's great to see you. I see lots of people I, I know and lots of new faces, and we're delighted to have you for what should be a very uh, interesting afternoon and really a, a launch for a set of conversations that we're going to be hosting over the next year and that we hope will be happening in, in lots of places. So uh, Gloria Steinem, in her sort of breakout uh, graduation address to Vassar in 1970, which was later published as an op-ed in the Washington Post. It is what base announced Gloria Steinem as an icon of the feminist revolution in the same way that uh, Betty Friedan's feminine mystique had in uh, nine years earlier. She gave this rousing commencement address uh, about uh, the need for a revolution for women. And one of the things she talked about was the ways in which the women's movement, or what I did grow up calling women's lib, women's liberation, just to date myself. You're nodding, Tyra, but you're much too young. To <laughs> uh, but that's what, what we originally called it. She, she, she described the liberation of women as part of the revolution that was sweeping the country, which was, of course, not just a revolution of women. It was, first of all, a youth revolution, right? It was a revolution against the establishment. It was a revolution for civil rights. Uh, it was a revolution for the, that had a big class dimension of working classes uh, in terms of democratic participation. And her speech and her later uh, uh, op-ed says, you know, the women's revolution is a bridge to this larger revolution because women are sisters and so women of color and working class women uh, and women of all different ethnic groups and religions can be sisters and can help fuel this larger revolution. And interestingly, she then also said, women won't be liberated until men are liberated. This is 1970, right? So she's, she gets the patriarchy. She, she, she understands that this is a revolution against the patriarchy. But she says, you know, men are confined to essentially the organization man, the gray flannel suit, Madison Avenue, anybody's watch Mad Men, that's the stereotype. And she says, men need to be liberated from that role just as much as women do. So two big points. One, the women's movement is a, is a part of a wider social revolution, a revolution in race and income that really strives for equality of all human beings, not just the advancement of women. And second, that the women's revolution will not be achieved until, the men's, uh, until we liberate men. So this afternoon, we're going to talk about half of that. Uh, we're going to talk about the ways in which uh, the women's movement has been a movement for all women and the ways in which it has not. Uh, and I will start by saying uh, this book, Alison Wolfe, uh, The Double X Factor. Uh, Alison Wolfe is a distinguished sociolo British sociologist. And it says how the rise of working women has created a far less equal world. Now, I'll just tell you, as a feminist, I don't subscribe to this in lots of ways. But it, what she's saying is as women, largely white women of privilege, have advanced and our lives have been completely revolutionized, right? My, my, my life looks nothing like my mother's life in terms of the uh, the. Uh, options that have been over to me ha have been open to me as white women of privilege have advanced not far enough but nevertheless have unquestionably advanced women of color have filled the jobs they used to have taking care of their children and so her argument is actually all women used to be the ha share the same experience we grew up we got married we had kids and that pretty much defined our lives the divide between working women and women who are doing traditional women's work has just gotten greater. And so she argues we're actually less equal. Now, I'm not going to debate her statistics. Uh, and I think, you know, again, from I, 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 women as a whole have advanced, but I want to raise a number of questions 
Uh, and I do also want to give you a preview from my own book, which is coming out uh, September 29th uh, and is called Unfinished Business, Women, Men, let me say that again, Women, Men, Work, Family. And it is about the unfinished business of the women's movement and what we have to do to actually get there and critically what we have to do to get there for all women and for men. But today we're going to be talking less about men, but it is an equally important part of the conversation. So the way, except that, you know, the feminine mystique was about white suburban women. And that's hardly news. For much of the 70s and the 80s, women of color uh, wrote in. Alice Walker talked about women, womanism. That, that, to talk about you know, being bored because you, you, you were you know, stuck in the suburbs taking care of your children was to speak to a particular class of women without question. But I think there's a there's a, a sort of a deeper structural problem with the women's movement to date, which is that we focused on advancing specific women to the positions men have traditionally held. That's very important, and I don't think we could have done it any other way, but that's been our focus. And the way we did it was to liberate women, and again, these are mostly white privileged women, but not exclusively, to be our fathers. And when I grew up, the message was really clear. My mother was a homemaker, my father was a lawyer. If you wanted to be a liberated woman, you became your father. That's what it was about, right? I mean, that, and that was the measure of your worth as a feminist, as a woman who was fighting for other women. And that made sense because my father and all the fathers like him held the power in society. So I'm not saying it wasn't a good idea to do that. That's if I didn't, if I couldn't become a lawyer or a doctor or a banker or a politician, and maybe even a president, we weren't going to change the power structures of the society. And we still got a long way to go there. And we know that we're still in, we're 15% of leaders in a good industry, 20 at most, 5% in a bad industry, like finance or lots of the sciences. So we still have a long way to go on the project of liberating women to hold the positions that men once held and still do hold. But along the way, we, fought, we valued women only to the extent they could become men. And we devalued women's work, traditional women's work. My mother's work, didn't want to do that. Right? No way. You didn't want to be a homemaker. To be a homemaker was to be an unliberated woman. And then we had the mommy wars and all sorts of things, too. We won't go into it. But the overall, I mean, I was raised to think that being competitive and winning and being, you know, succeeding and making an income, that was the measure of worth. Being a caring person, investing in others, taking care of children, taking care of parents, taking care of siblings and spouses and friends, that work was much less important than the work of competition. That caregiving was much less important than breadwinning. And note that winning is built right into the way we think of earning a living. Right? We call it breadwinning and caregiving. That has to change because, in fact, society only works when you both earn an income and allow people to pursue their passions and their goals and uh, compete and competition's a great thing, right? It drives all sorts of, of great outcomes. It's terrific, right? Without competition, the human race would, you know, still be probably living in caves. That's equally true about care, right? We would never have gotten past the first saber-toothed tiger if we did not take care of each other. We of all species, right? We depend, we are social animals. We care for each other. That is the key evolutionarily, if you go back and, and read uh, either uh, anthropologists and, and paleontologists and look at how we actually evolved. But you can think of it much more simply than that. Think about this, so I, so I earn an income and I bring it home and I put down those dollars on the table. They don't do anything. They sit there until somebody turns them into food and shelter 
and clothing, and that's just the physical needs. Nurture, coaching, discipline, being present, anchoring a family, you have to have both. They're equal parts of human nature, they're equal parts of human history, and they're equal parts of any well-functioning society. So my proposition is that to go forward, we still need to advance women in traditional men's positions, absolutely. But we equally need to value the work that women have traditionally done, the work of care, and we need to value it whether women or men do it. And believe me, if we start valuing it more, it will be more attractive to men to do, right? I mean, why, would, why is a guy who is in a job earning an income going to want to become a caregiver if what that means is he just stepped out of the social hierarchy, right? As many women describe, when they stop working for income and they stay home or work part-time and they say, what are you doing? I'm taking care of my children. You just, you just became nobody. That's the way people describe it. So we have to value that care as an equally important part of human nature, of an economy, from the point of view of society, investing in our children and taking care of our old people is absolutely as important as managing money, right? From the military point of view, it's more important because you actually, you need to raise the next generation and from the economic point of view. So let me just, so let me talk about care and, and bring that back to our theme for the afternoon. If we value care, that is an experience that privileged women, working women, poor women still have in common. Very different consequences, but they're all negative. So if you are a woman who is in a career, and you're highly educated, and you're heading along, and you have a child, or your parents are ill, or a spouse is ill, or whatever, whoever, somebody in your circle of the people you love, and let me make clear, Constructed families are every bit as much families as biological families. This is not a claim about who you happen to have been born with. If you take time out for care, you just, that was a major black mark on your resume, right? It's a black hole if you take time out. You don't put caregiving. It's a black hole. You, and even if you're still working, you just took yourself off leadership track because you're clearly not committed to your career because you're spending a day at home with your children. So obviously, you know, you're just not on the fast track. You don't have what it takes. So you, you immediately hurt yourself if you take time out for care. If you're in the middle class, you are trying to work and take care. You got an income, but you're absolutely on the edge. And if anything goes wrong, you're likely to tip over. Right, because you're 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 doing both, and you're holding it together. This is uh, Elizabeth Warren and, and her daughter uh, Amy um, Warren Tiagi's book that points out uh, that the the um, middle class is now much more fragile, in large part because mom is now working. Before, the, if you had a non-working uh, woman, when the father lost his job or something else happened, she could go into the market. It was like an insurance policy. Now you're, you're both working flat out trying to do both, and you're very vulnerable. If you are a poor woman, you are overwhelmingly likely to be trying to be a caregiver and a breadwinner at the same time, and you are getting no support on the care side. Right? We want you to work. We overhauled welfare to, so that you could work. We are not giving you decent daycare, uh, dec any kind of, a of, of affordable after school, any kind of recognition that you, you need. You, you know, if your child is sick, you're the only person who can stay home. You are your extended family. We are not valuing care. If we value care, and all the policies that go with it. And as I said, obviously it's prenatal care, it's really high quality and affordable child care as other advanced democracies manage to provide. It's all different kinds of, of thinking about how we manage school, like maybe we could start with school schedules and move beyond the late 19th century. Wouldn't that be nice? You know, We have a school schedule that is aimed for the agricultural economy of the late 19th century. Uh, but it's also mental health. Right? It's all the ways in which we have to care for people, not just physically, but also mentally. And critically, for a society where 10,000 people are turning 65 every single day, and where the baby boom's becoming an elder boom, we need elder care. 
If we valued all those things, then women at the top and men who took time out for care would be valued. I actually respect someone enormously if that person says, you know, like my sister-in-law, I could be this and I could get all that prestige and all that money, but actually my child needs me. Maybe you have a child with special needs. Maybe you just have a child with extra needs. I'm going to invest in that child rather than in my own career. I think that's a sign of character. I certainly think that's a person I would hire. Is that a person I'd promote as fast as someone who hadn't taken time out? No, because the other person is doing that job faster. Okay, that's fine. But is it a person I'd promote and hire and value? You bet it. And man as well as woman. So if you value care, it actually does reunite the experience of all women, even though we experience the care penalty differently, and obviously women at the bottom much more severely. It unites you politically. It unites elder care and child care. And gradually, and this is where I will end because we're going to move on to our panels, if we value care, we will value care when men do it just as much as when women do it. And we'll value it, and this is the last thing I'll say, not just because it was a good thing to do and somebody else needed it, as a, you know, this is like an altruistic thing, you invested in somebody else. We'll understand that caring for someone else and doing it well is just as much an enhancer of personal growth and development as learning how to win that learning how to invest in somebody else, it's not so easy, right? Think about it as a parent, you know, can't, it can't just be making your child a mini me, even if that would work, and it certainly won't with mine. But it's that combination of investing and teaching and nurturing, but also holding firm and knowing when to be tough and knowing when to push and giving that person what that person needs to live up to his or her potential. That teaches you every bit as much as it teaches the person you are caring for. And we could go through the same thing for elder care, for care of, of peers. So. Um, if you want to know all the ways in which you grow and all the implications, there's a book you can order. It's available on Amazon, but I'll stop the, uh, the infomercial. Uh, and uh, I do want to then just say uh, this, this conversation then to me is an incredibly important conversation that we need to have independent of my argument. We need once again, as Gloria Steinem said, to ask how, it, how can the women's movement advance all women. We need that because politically we're not going to get what we need without a much broader coalition, but we need that because that's the spirit of what equality means. It doesn't just mean equality between some men and some women. It's a much broader conversation. Uh, and with that, we're going to turn to our first panel, uh, which is the Act Across Communities. Uh, and I will call up, uh, I, I think, is Bridget moderating the panel? I'm looking out for somewhere. Come on up, that, uh, the members of that, that panel. Uh, after that panel, uh, we're going to hear from Tyra Mariani, who's going to talk about stepping back, who can't get in on the act. Uh, and then we're going to uh, have a final panel on off balance at work. Thanks very much.